that uh, the gentleman from Wisconsin, Mr. Stile, is recognized for five minutes. Chairman Nzinga, thank you for holding today's hearing, and thank you for waving me on uh, to the subcommittee. It's such an important topic that we're discussing, and incredibly timely uh, following the attack uh, by terrorists from Hamas against defenseless Israeli citizens. And when we see Iran as the world's largest state sponsor of terrorism, and we look at the Biden administration's policy allowing Iran to have access to funds, I think it's imperative that we in Congress examine that and move this administration in a new and different direction. I think the direction that this administration has been on, providing access to funds to Iran, looking the other way as it relates to oil sanctions in particular, where billions of dollars are being able to move into Iranian-controlled coffers, is incredibly dangerous. And so I want to dig in a little bit, if I can. I want to start with you, Mr. Uh, Narana. Um, walk us through a little bit of how these funds are flowing, because I think it's really imperative for the American people to understand. We had the Biden administration come forward uh, and say that the Iranians don't have access to these funds in Qatar. Yet clearly they issued the waiver and then a license to transfer those funds to Qatar. Last year in the NDAA, I successfully got an amendment passed, signed into law, that will force this administration to disclose those types of licenses. Waivers previously were, were forced under, under 2012. Now we have access to the licenses, so we can actually see with transparency how this administration is giving deference and giving access to Iran. We now know it went to Qatar. Do we actually have any proof that what the administration is saying as it relates to these funds, uh, that the, the Iranians don't have access, that they haven't done that? What's, what's the proof on this? There has been no documentation sent over to Congress. They did not affirmatively provide the package, the written agreement to Congress. I, I think one, one point that's, that's relevant here, uh, the laws that we've been describing here from 2012, they allowed bilateral trade in South Korean won to Iran. They didn't allow for euros and dollars. That is a permissive waiver and granting so, a, of a concession to Iran to allow that money. So I think that's really important. So that's the actual waiver of the, the, the actual waiver. And then they provide the license to transfer that over to Qatar such that they can be dealing in a much more liquid uh, currency form. Is that right? That's correct. If they wanted to buy food and medicine from South Korea, they could have. They chose not to. They don't want, again, it's not, the emphasis is not on helping the Iranian people. The so access, someone should be suspect. Why, why would they not want to buy, you know, maybe some, some food or some medical supplies loaded onto a boat uh, in South Korea that would then go over to Iran, and, and maybe they could at least argue uh, that they're trying to help people, that they're not going to pilfer these things off the top. Why would all of a sudden they want access to euros? Because euros are what Hezbollah and Hamas want at the end of the day, and it's much easier to do this if it's in those currencies. So the, the administration was hoping everyone would look the other way on the transfer of these funds to Qatar, and most likely most of the international community would have, but for the attack by terrorists from Hamas into Israel, where the world's attention turned to this region once again, and the administration was exposed on their poor decision to transfer, to allow the transfer of these funds from custody in South Korea to Qatar. Is that accurate? I believe that is, sir. And so let's, let's dive in one step further. You, you made, a, I think, an important point about the administration looking the other ways relates to oil sales, which from a dollar standpoint, is, or from a value standpoint, dollar, euro, whatever currency they're operating in, is probably a more relevant um, discussion point. And this administration has looked the other way while Iran has been able to, to transfer oil uh, to China as well as Syria. Is that accurate? They have been notified many times of all the tankers that are evading their sanctions and, and why, all of these, and they haven't done it. And, and why is the administration looking the other way? Because they want to advance their nuclear deal with Iran, which is a broader political objective. And it's, who gets the funds? Iran at the end of is the day. Does it go to the central bank accounts? Does it go to a food organization? Does it get at least some warm and fuzzy operation? Uh, in Iran, so they could at least pretend they're doing the right thing with this? It's a, it's a complicated international financial network. It's not easy for them to move things under sanctions. Sanctions make it harder, yep. which is the point. But it's sort of, a, it's like a seethe. It slowly drips in and, and, and comes back into Iran. And in particular, when Iran has access to new funds, it's like a gift card that gives Iran the ability to purchase other things. And as we know, Iran's the leading state sponsor 
of terrorism around the globe, and ultimately, I'm wildly concerned these funds are falling into the hands of operations like Hezbollah and Hamas. Mr. Chairman, thank you for holding this hearing. I yield back. Gentlemen's time has expired.